A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abominations. Thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem, by origin and birth, you are of the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth, the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut. You were neither washed with water nor anointed, nor were you rubbed with salt, nor swathed in swaddling clothes. No one looked on you with pity or compassion to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out on the ground as something loathsome the day you were born. Then I passed by and saw you weltering in your blood. I said to you, live in your blood and grow like a plant in the field. You grew and developed. You came to the age of puberty. Your breasts were formed, your hair had grown, but you were still stark naked. Again, I passed by you and saw that you were now old enough for love. So I spread the corner of my cloak over you to cover your nakedness. I swore an oath to you and entered a covenant with you. You became mine, says the Lord God. Then I bathed you with water, washed away your blood, and anointed you with oil. I clothed you with an embroidered gown put sandals of fine leather on your feet. I gave you a fine linen sash and silk robes to wear. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms, a necklace about your neck, a ring in your nose, pendants in your ears, and a glorious diadem upon your head. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver. Your garments were of fine linen, silk, and embroidered cloth fine flour, honey, and oil were your food. You were exceedingly beautiful with the dignity of a queen. You were renowned among the nations for your beauty, perfect as it was, because of my splendor which I had bestowed upon you, says the Lord God. But you were captivated by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot, and you lavished your harlotry on every passerby whose own you became. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you when you were a girl, and I will set up an everlasting covenant with you that you may remember and be covered with confusion, and that you may be utterly silenced for shame when I pardon you for all you have done, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have turned from your anger. You have turned from your anger. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord and he has been my savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You have turned from your anger. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name, among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You have, you have turned, turned from, from your, your anger. anger. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You have, you have turned, turned from, from your anger. Lord. 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and testing him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? So, They are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. Then they said to him, Then why did Moses command the man to give the wife a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, is it, not better, is it better not to marry? He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom it is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so. Some because they were made so, so they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom. Whoever can accept this thought ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. If I had to condense down all these words in the readings today, I would go, my mind and my heart would go, this is about God's personal passion for us. And the issue of the hardness of heart is whether we have a hardness of heart towards God. If that conundrum of the resistance to God the hardness towards God, for whatever reasons, if that is removed, then the heart of flesh, of love, nuptial character of love with God, all of that comes into play. And so it also then, this passionate love for us, personal love for us, when we have this resistance and we have this difficulty, evokes in us a longing for it when we recognize we're not 100% topped up on nuptial love with God. When we realize that, we go for more, right? You go to a banquet, and they're giving you French fries, five of them. Imagine that, what a feast, five French fries. You go out of there hungry, you want more. It's the very same way spiritually when I realize I haven't been replete with God's divine love, with all of its nuptial characteristics, I need it, I long it, I crave for it. This is the story in Ezekiel. It's a beautiful, profound, rich encapsulation of salvation history, of all of scripture, right in that passage. If I had another 30 minutes, I'd give it to you straight. But it's God's passion for this not highly born, not well-born person, namely Israel. Um, If you were back then living and someone said your father was an Amorite and your mother was a Hittite, your reaction would be, oh no, not Hittite, not Amorite. Oh my goodness, I'd rather be a Canaanite than, you know. It's that bad. It's like low, low, low. And at your birth, you were neglected. I won't go into the details. You already heard them. Really powerful stuff. You were born lowly. We were born lowly. Israel was born lowly. 
God passed by. Then he said, I saw you. Then yet I saw you. I clothed you. I washed you. I did this. And from this very lowly born creature, now at puberty, God transforms out of his passion for her. It's nuptial, right? It's male, female. It's nuptial. He makes a covenant. It's nuptial. He makes, he transforms her, Israel, into a queen with all the garments, putting on the robes, if you will, of dignity. And it says, because of my glory. I couldn't believe it when that showed up there. I thought to myself, how amazingly, exceedingly spectacular is that? Because of his glory adorning her, she becomes very beautiful, captured by her own beauty, and becomes a harlot. So we've got this great, I need saving, you're being saved, but you're so wrapped up into your safeness, into your beauty that was a re reputed for all the land. <laughs> so now you're harloting around. You're, abus you're abusing your beauty. You're cheapening it. At the end, I will make a covenant. So this is the history of Israel. They received the revelation from God, right? Beginning with, let's say, Adam, Abraham, Moses, David, and so on. It's like an up and down color, but he promises because of their deep sin that I will make an everlasting covenant. There will always be forgiveness available. Ta-da, Jesus, ta-da, the Catholic Church. These all express a passion that God has for us who doesn't have a body. God the Father does not have a body. So the only known way is Jesus' body. It's Jesus' incarnation. That's where we begin to encounter the depth of what we see in Ezekiel. And that passion is to clothe us, which he did at baptism, to give us the diadem that we are kings and queens before our father, the emperor. It's very moving and the response is, that's why we can't have divorce, because marriage is not rooted just in human horizontal level. Our Catholic marriages, our sacramental marriages, participate in the marriage between God and Israel, God and the church. That's the, that's the marriage, Christ and the church. All sacramental marriages are, are participating in the witness to that mystical but very real reality of undying love, selfless love, sacrificial love, transformative love, love that elevates the human soul. So the hardness of heart is not against the wife. In part it is for divorce. It's really the hardness of heart against God who wants this sacramental sign across all nations and all generations. Hence, Divorce is not kosher in both the Jewish and Catholic sense, right? Because there's a heart as a heart towards God. Are there many pastoral nuances? Of course. Even Jesus gives them. What does he say? Unless it's unlawful. What's unlawful? When in Jewish culture, you don't marry your first cousin, and you don't marry your first cousin or your sister or your brother, in Catholic or Jewish culture. That's an unlawful marriage. If it's someone who's been divorced and remarried but not annulled, that's an unlawful marriage. Are there pastoral nuances? Yes. We just need to work those things out over time. We can do that. We have done that. It is being done. We accept that. But not to lose sight of the core of it, that God has a passion for us, that he rescues us, from our own blood, our own darkness, and the way in which we come in contact with that, besides the proclamation of the word of God, is in the sacraments. And so now we're going to meet in the, the guise of bread, he who spoke these words through Ezekiel, 
We're going to meet him who has the same passion revealed in Ezekiel, even more proved by his death on the cross, illustrated by that. What do we need from him? I'd say legion, many things. Let's figure that out as we're walking up. Let's listen attentively to the prayers of petition. Let's pray for those people. Let's listen attentively to Father Drake when he prays the, 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 the remaining prayers and says the words of consecration. Let's listen to that. Listen for the passion of God for us personally. And let's see where that takes us. May Jesus Christ be praised. Now and